Okay, before I show you how it's done, I want to show you what it's doing. This is Adventure Maker, and I want to show you how to create it so the door looks like it's opening and closing, or actually opening, and how to unlock a door, and how to save the status so if they go to a different room and come back, the door status is the same. So if they leave the room and they've left it with the door unlocked but closed, they come back, it's still the same way. So first let's just look at and see how I did this, how, how it looks when I run it. They come in here, they got a door. If the user clicks on the door, it gives them a message that the door is locked. And you'll notice I checked the variables. This is how you actually test to see what the door status is. If it's zero, the door is shut and locked. If, if the variable is one, the door is shut and unlocked. If the door is two, the door is open. I've got two different doors, two different variables. Okay, so they clicked on it and it's locked, right? So well, how do you open a door? Use a key. I've got a key in the inventory. I am with Adventure Maker. You click and drag a key on here. And when you do that, that's a click event. And you can code behind that. So in this case, I display a message that the, that the key unlocked the door. And you notice I set the variable for door 1 equal to 1, which means the door is unlocked but shut. All right. So I'm not going to open the door yet. Let's go to a different room. So I just have some other frames. Doesn't do anything. Come in here. Nothing's changed. Door 1 variable is still set to 1. And this is door 2. It's set to 0. Okay. That means that this door is locked and shut. This door is unlocked and shut. So if I drag the key to this one, it's going to unlock the door. It sets door to, and by doing that, I set door 2 equal to 1, which means the door is shut and unlocked. This is a hot spot right here. It's a different vi um, image than the rest of this whole background image. The background image right here behind this door, this hot spot, is black. So if I were to click on this again, It'll set door 2 equal to 2, which means the door is open. So this is unlocked right now. There you go. I clicked on it. The door is open. And now if I wanted to, I could go through here. But I didn't want to add more frames, so I just say it's too dark. That means this is what happens when I, they clicked on that hot spot. And the door is unlocked. I set door 2 equal to 2. And that's how I know by checking my status of my variable when they click is what what it should be next after they click and what 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 the situation is with the hotspot so we back go back to to room number one door two in the other room is still two which means the door is open doorway is open and in this case door one is still it's unlocked and but it's shut so if I click on this door which is a hot spot, I'm going to set the image to transparent for this hot spot, which makes it appear the door is open. I just hide that hot spot. And this hot spot's still clickable, it's still enabled, so I can go and click on it and check the status. And in this case, the status for door number one is two, which I know it's open. And since I know it's open when they click on it, I give them this message and say, oh, the door is open, so I go ahead and decide that they can't go in because they don't have light, or I could go ahead and go to another frame for that room that's behind this dark area. So that's how it's done. It's all about checking your variables for door one and door two and tracking them. So you have some if conditions and you have some settings for these, and you just manipulate the hotspot. There's three areas that you will set. There's clicking on the hotspot itself. There's dragging the key on here. Oh, by the way, I do have it check when it's open. The door is already unlocked. <clears throat> so I checked that. That's all based on these variables. 
If it's set to 2, I know it's open. So if you try to key on an open door, yeah, it's unlocked. So I check it here on the hotspot. I check it on a drag with a key. And I check it when they go into a frame. When they enter the frame when it's a door, I check it. So I can so if it's at two, I know to hide the hotspot. Otherwise, just leave it. Okay, so now I'll show you what the code looks like. Now let's look at the code. Remember there's three basic areas. There's two variables we check. This is room one. This is door one for this hotspot number one. There's three areas the code needs to be checked, that the variable needs to be checked. That's when they click on the hotspot. That's when they drag the key from the inventory to the hotspot. And that's when they come into the frame. Let's first look at when they click on the door. We look at the advanced code because it's VB script. And here's the code. Remember, there's three settings for the door. If it's zero and they click on it and the door is zero, I say it's locked. They have to drag the key to the door to change the status of this variable to one. So when they click on it and it's zero, that means the door is locked. And just by trying to use your hand, by clicking on it, you're not going to unlock the door. So it stays at zero. If they click on the door and the door status setting is at one, then that means that they've already unlocked the door by dragging a key on it. In that case, that means the door is unlocked and they're opening the door. So I hide the hotspot by using the command load a picture, hotspot one, and then I don't put an image in, I leave it blank. That sets the hotspot to transparent. That shows the background, which is black. And then I also display a message, you open the door. And then I set the variable door one equal to two because they've opened the door. So to recap real quick, door one equals one when they clicked on it. And if it does equal one, that means they've opened the door and they want to set the door one to two because it's open. And that's how I can tell that it's open. If they come back with the door open, they click on it. Now I can either go to a new frame because they're walking through the doorway. Or in my case, I didn't want to make more frames. And I just say it's too dark. You need to get some light. Okay. And that's how you would do for any door. So if you've got more other doors, you would have another variable for that door, like door two, door three, door four, however many doors you want. And it doesn't matter what frame they're in. This is a code you would use on that hotspot. Now to create the variables for the doors, you go to variables off the advanced tab. And you notice I've got door one and door two as integers. So you do a new integer variable. You type in the name of the, of the variable. Let's say I've got a third door. So I have door three and say OK. And it creates a variable. And it, it starts the value for the variable at zero automatically. Okay. Now we looked at the we looked at the code for clicking on the hotspot, the door. What about the key? Click over here on manage inventory items because that's where the key is at. And you're going to create a key. I, then you go down here to create new item. Type in key or however you want what you want to call it. That's what displays on the inventory. And then you go into select the icon for your key. We well, already did this, so I'll just show it to you. Once you do that, it shows it here. You click and drag it to the hotspot, and that's what the user would do. So that's what you would do to set the code. So the user drags it to the hotspot, and this is where you're going to set what to do with it. So you go to the advanced tab because it's script. And this is the code you put in when they drag the key to the hotspot. If door one equals zero, that means if the 
if the variable is zero, it means it's, it, the doors, the hotspot is shut and locked. Then, since they dragged the key to it, let's unlock it. So you set door one to one, and that means the door is shut and unlocked. And I display the message that the door is unlocked. And this is, means when it's one that it's unlocked. If door one is not zero, that means it's either already unlocked or the door is open and unlocked. So it's either one or two, right? So if it's not zero, then I go to L statement and I say the doors are already unlocked. This is all the code you need for dragging the key on the door. One more piece. So we've got, we got the code behind the hotspot, we've got the key to the door, and now what about when they come in the frame? If we didn't do anything, when they come in the frame, this hotspot would show the door every time. So we need to check to see what the status is for that variable for that door. So you go to frame properties, advanced, and this is what happens when they come in. Ignore this piece, that's test. When they first come in, you check. If the variable is equal to 2, that means the door is open. You want to hide the image on that hotspot because you don't want the door to be there, right? The door is open. That's the only code you need. Check to see if the variable is set to 2 and then hide the hotspot. So you load a picture on the hotspot with a blank image and that's how you make it transparent. And that's the only code you need for coming into the frame where there's a door. Okay? And that's the same code you would use on the other frame. So if you were to come over here and look at this one, it's the same code. The only difference is the variable name. In this case, it's door number two. So it's the same code, but in this case, it's the variable is door number two to control that hotspot. Okay? So you can have however many doors you want. You just have to control the variable for that for that hotspot based on that door. Okay, so three pieces: hotspot, key to the door to the hotspot, and entering the frame. That's it. Hopefully, you got you were able to see the code and use it. If you have any questions, please feel free to PM me at the Adventure Maker forums. Or you can contact me through email at hickchickgames at gmail.com. Hickchickgames at gmail.com. Thanks.